If you're into car care and detailing and have been for some time, you have undoubtedly heard about Soft 99's Fuso Coat. This is a 12 month coating. They say it's a wax, but it's not really a wax. It's a paste sealant and it's high fluorine. Now this is the old version of it, but more recently Soft 99 released updated versions. This is both the dark and the light version of Fuso Coat. The question is, and this has been requested of me many times, can you compare the old version to the new versions? Is there much of a difference? And also, is there a difference between the light and the dark? That's all coming up in today's video. So folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Specky. I make car care reviews, detailing reviews, how to's and so on. If this is your kind of thing, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I also have a podcast with my good friend, Paul Dolden. It's called Specky and Paul Talk Detailing, where we release fortnightly podcasts all about the things to do with car care and the car care community. So definitely go and check that out. It's completely free. I will leave descriptions, no links in the description down below. Go and check those out. Anyway, this is today's video. I've had the old Fuso coat for quite some time. Now this is the pale one, the light colored one. There was also a dark one. Lots of people had said that the light and dark make absolutely no difference. And I've tested enough waxes over the years, light and dark, to basically work out that there's no real noticeable difference. Maybe in application, but once you remove it and you've buffed everything off, it doesn't leave enough behind to make that much of a difference. But I've got a black car today to test these on. So here I've got the dark and light versions and we're going to try these out. Now, one thing I want to point out is that on the instructions on all of these, they do not mention anything about dampening the applicator sponge. By the way, that's why these are massive like this. It's actually a smaller tin, but they all come with an applicator sponge, right? A foam sponge. And lots of people have said that the application is easier with a damp applicator versus a dry applicator. So I'm going to be trying both today. I'm going to try them dry first and then damp. I'm actually going to try two different applicators. I've got a brand new pack of very soft uh, foam applicators right here. So we're going to give those a try instead of using these because I've got more that I can dispose of there. I've already prepped the panel. The panel has been washed with an abrasive shampoo. It's been washed with an iron fallout shampoo. It has been clayed with a clay mitt. It has then been polished with a finishing polish and then wiped down with an IPA solution with a panel prep. So there's nothing at all on that panel. It means it is perfectly prepped and ready to receive these products. So I'm going to go out now, give them a try. We're going to check out the application. We're going to buff them off. And then we're going to have a look at the water behavior afterwards and give them a bit of a torture test. All right, so have a look here. This is the original Fuso. And this is a dry application with a brand new soft foam applicator right there. And as with waxes, I know this isn't really a wax. It's a sealant. But generally, the rule is the same with any kind of paste product. Generally, less is more. So don't go too heavy handed. Now, I will admit this. I do think even this was slightly too much for the small test section that I was working on here, which is why you'll see me working on this for quite a while. I'm really trying to make sure I give everything a really good even spread. This is important because it makes sure that there are no high spots. And I have heard in the past that if you leave high spots of this product to cure for too long, you will end up with basically something you need to machine polish off. It will go that hard. Now, I've never seen it myself, but I don't want to take that chance, which is why I am being very meticulous here. I'm using a dampened applicator. You can see the water on there. And I have picked up slightly less product as my camera goes into a bit of a meltdown. And I apologize for this. I think it could be on its last legs, sadly. It cuts out on me a couple of times in this video, and I do apologize. If you want to donate to the Specky Needs a New Camera Fund, make sure to give a super thanks down underneath the description, or underneath the title of this video at least. 
I would appreciate that because this camera wasn't very happy. As far as the temperatures here, I've got a gazebo out because it was sunny. It was 23 degrees and relatively windy. You can see here the water on the pad was in a way helping me spread this out better and I didn't think that would work so well. Here is new Fuso light dry application. Maybe just a little bit less on this pad this time. Although I will say this much, the newer Fuso does seem to be a bit harder in the tin. The product is perhaps just a little bit softer on the old one. That could be to do with the fact that the old one, it was the age. I have had that product for some years and I haven't had a huge amount of use out of it. Obviously these two newer products, they I haven't had them quite so long, so they're not going to be quite so well aged. And that could have something to do with this, but you'll see in the water test later on in the video how that all pans out in a real world effort. Here is a dampened sponge applicator, loading it up and yeah, maybe just a touch more. Having a, a dampened applicator does mean you tend to pick up a little bit less product, but in a way it makes it easier to apply and easier to spread. You can see I'm speeding it up now because otherwise this video will just get boring. Here is the dark dry application while the camera goes into weird meltdown mode and then eventually it cuts out before I get to doing the wet application. So we're moving on to the buff. This is after everything has been applied. Generally speaking, your buffing time is around about 10 minutes. If it's warmer, it could be less. If it's cooler, it could be more. But you can see here the original Fuso light. This is a breeze to buff off. Very, very simple and straightforward. No difficulties, no hard work. Really not a problem at all. This is the newer Fuso light, the more recent one. And it's exactly the same. In fact, I would say maybe slightly easier. It was a more buttery product to apply and it does seem to buff just that little bit easier. So the user friendliness, the user experience is definitely nicer with the newer products. The Fuso Black, new version, same situation. And I can also report that uh, there was no white staining or anything like that on the plastic washer jet covers. Now I wanted to give a quick test of slickness here. How do they feel under the towel? What are they slick? Can they slide? Can I slide this microfiber? And you can see the older Fuso doesn't quite slide quite as quickly and easily, whereas the newer light and dark have more speed on the towel. So I'm going with that. Here's a quick look at a basic water test for now. This would be light rainfall. It's a very gentle spray of water. And we're gonna have a look at the beading. Technically speaking, we don't want beading because when these beads dry out, they are going to leave behind watermarks. So really, we don't want it, but look at that. How nice is that? That's original Fuso Light. Moving across here to new Fuso Light. Look at those beads, they're like little globes. This really is something amazing to look at. It really is. And it's a shame that we shouldn't have this. We want sheeting, but unfortunately we love beading. So we just have to put up with this. Look at the micro beading on that as well in between. Absolutely insane. Now let's give it a real deluge of water to find out. Can we make it sheet? Can we make the water come together? The short answer here is no. This is ceramic coating level of water behavior this is. It's absolutely incredible. This is one of the most hydrophobic products that you will get that does not have ceramic components. It uses fluorine as one of its main components. And I believe there's only maybe Fuso Coat and the Gion Wax, Q2 Wax, the latest one, it looks like a, a lipstick that have high amounts of fluorine in them. The, the black one you can see there, it does hang on to a little bit of water, but not by much. You can also see there's a bit of a line across the bonnet from left to right on the center and right sections there. That's where I had stopped waxing one section and started on the other. 
obviously on the left side there was more of an overlap but you can see that water behavior is just phenomenally good yes all right we've seen enough of that now let's get on with it this is the misting this is what i'm looking for i want to get a lot of water on the panel now to carry out some testing and this is where I'm going to be using Garage Therapy's Zero Decon Shampoo in the spray trigger there at a dilution ratio of 10 to 1. And I'm using this soft bristled detailing brush from 26JPN. And this is going to be to give it the test, the chemical test. Very gentle pressure on the brush there, not spreading out the bristles too far, just using the tips of the bristles and going down the center of each section. This is to test both the wet and the dry applications so dry on the top wet on the bottom everything is going to get roughly the same amount of time for dwell simple as that i'm not going to waste any time i'm not going to leave them there for a long time rinsing off the left section first and you can see the line you can actually see it there where the zero decon shampoo has been Look onto the center section now. You can also see the line there. It's more apparent on that one. And on the right side, the black, you can really see that. On the top right section, you can really see it took a massive hit. The left side has a line where the Zero Decon shampoo was applied, but it's still very hydrophobic there. So although there's a line and it makes a change to the looks slightly, there's really no difference when it comes to the resilience here it is still very very hydrophobic this is the new fuso light section and you can see the center section there is hanging on to a bit of water it has definitely taken a bit of a hit it's still relatively hydrophobic but not as good as it was when freshly applied you can see there are pools of water hanging there but you'll notice on the lower section where the wet application has been applied or the, the dampened microfiber, you can see there's not the same level of change. There's one minor line right there. And I thought maybe it was some residue I could wipe off with my finger. But the answer is no, it's still there. But the wet applied or the dampened section is definitely faring better here. This is the new Fuso Black. And you can see a much bigger hit there. I don't know if this is something to do with the chemical makeup of it, the fact that it's a darker colour, I don't know. And my camera cut out on me before we could check the lower section. It also cut out on me as I had applied this. This is using a wash mitt. I'll show you because I'm going to do it twice here. But I used the Zero Decon shampoo on a microfiber wash mitt and wiped over the entire panel. This is to test not just the chemical resilience, but also the mechanical resilience as far as abrasion is concerned. You can see there, there is a bit of slowing on multiple sections now. Here is the wash mitt. It's a very basic microfiber wash mitt. I use this one because it makes the most contact with the paint. And I'm just spraying on the Zero Decon shampoo like I did with the brush earlier. Spraying it onto this wash mitt and just wiping up and down. Generally speaking, this is how you should be washing your panels. Wash in the direction of the airflow of your car. Does it make much of a difference? I don't know. But someone said it one day, so I decided to do the same thing. So everything from left to right and right to left. And then everything will get rinsed off again. And we'll have a look and see if it has made much of a difference. So this is abrasion as well as chemical resilience. You can see it's really up to you what you think. I'd be interested to hear from you in the comments which one you think fares the best. The black actually looks really good apart from the originally hit sections. The original light colored one is failing in parts, but it's also holding on well in parts as well. You can see there more application of water 
Some of it is still beading nicely, and some of it is pooling up. The new light Fuso, again, where that original hit was, right in the middle, but also you've got sections on the left. But on the lower dampened application section, it's fading a bit better. And then the black, similar situation. The dry application section at the top seems to be a bit worse off than the bit at the bottom. It's interesting stuff, this. So I decided after all this to give the panel a quick dry and I'm going to reapply a wax purely for my own personal testing and my own personal pleasure. And this was also a weather test too. You can see there on the reflection, the sun is about to peek out from around those clouds. I have gone with the new Fuso Black with a dampened applicator and I'm applying this to the entire bonnet for my own personal pleasure and my own personal testing. You can see the sun is now starting to come out. Like I said, it was a warm sunny day and this is not something I would recommend that you do. Don't do this in direct sunlight, but here you're seeing it live. I buffed it off with absolute ease. There were no difficulties. It worked way better than I expected. Okay, so after all that, what are the results? Obviously, the older one just has that slight edge as far as the resilience goes. It didn't show the same level of hit. Or it didn't seem to be quite as sporadic, especially between the dry application and the wet application. They were practically identical. It didn't make a difference. The new versions, these were different. The wet application was better, which you know, doesn't make a lot of sense in my head. I found it very interesting because there's no instructions on here to say use it damp, but the uh, soft99fuso.eu website tells you that it will facilitate a better application if you use your uh, sponge wet, which is, or at least damp, which was interesting. I thought introducing a bit of water, okay, it might make it spread a bit better, but maybe that's going to be too thin. Maybe it's not going to work well enough. Maybe it's not going to bond properly. I didn't know, but it turns out a damp applicator with the newer versions is better. It just makes it a bit easier to spread. It buffs just as easily. This older version, I know if you don't leave this to dry enough, it can become very temperamental to buff off. The newer versions, much more forgiving. I gave that a, a damp application, but in warm, warm weather, in practically direct sunlight and it came off a breeze. So the user friendliness of these, it's definitely an upgrade. But for everything else, if you've got an old tin of Fuso, keep using it. You're gonna get great results with it. If you need to get a new one and you can't find any of these in shops anymore because I know they've stopped them since the new one is out, grab a new one. You'll be very happy with it, but make sure you use a damp sponge with it. It just makes that user experience just that little bit nicer. It just applies a little bit better. And from my testing, it's purely my testing, I see slightly better performance, whether that's to do with the more even distribution, the, the better spread of the product. I'm not entirely sure. I can only tell you how I experience it, but definitely very, very interesting. And as far as the prices of waxes go. If you prefer a paste product, the cost per use of these is pretty low and the performance you'll get from them compared to some other sprayable products or even natural waxes, you should get much more durability out of these. If you can get a year out of them, that makes these very, very good value for money. But if you want something that is a bit of a quick topper, there are other things. Soft 99 make versions. I made a previous video, which I'll add a thing to here at the end of the video. So you can see there was the Fuso spray and there was the Fuku Pika spray, the quick detailer and so on. So there's a few of those you can try out as well. I also tested the uh, Fuso 7, which was the liquid sealant. And that one was in a previous multi sealant test. I suggest you go back and check out some of these videos to see how they work. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed this video, if you have found it useful, helpful in some way, please go ahead and smash that like button. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss my next video uploads. And don't forget to check out the podcast. In the meantime though, I've been Specky. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.